How are you, brother? I'm fantastic. How are you guys? Yeah, we're good. We're excited to get a chance to uh, to chat with you for a little BP today. Let's start with your shirt. Say I had a good day yesterday, so you're repping him? Yeah. Got to take the obvious shirt out for BP. Say it's three for three with the walk yesterday. Give him some love. Yeah. Say a shirt. Bam. Look at that. You weren't tempted to wear a shirt that said I hit my 100th career home run yesterday. Dig me. Yeah. The, the, the dig me shirt. Yeah. A little taster <laughs> shirt. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you negotiate with with the, the little guy that caught the ball? Were you able to get it? Yeah, I did. It was his 10th birthday. So he came down with his family after the game, and we were able to do a little, little trade. Give him a, a, a bat, a ball, and then he had a card. Uh, actually, they wanted me to sign, so I signed the card for him, and he was generous, gracious enough to give me the ball. So that one's going into the, uh, into the collection. That was pretty nice of him. Yeah, I think a good obvious shirt would be if it was like a mirror. You know, if you had a, you know, you had a mirror as a shirt, and you know everybody can kind of see their own reflection in your shirt. I like that. Uh, you think, yeah. Can you can you promote that for me? You know. That, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we can get that and install a little <laughs> mirror installation on the front of the shirt. They had the uh, Joe had a good one. I think maybe me and Saya, or I mean somebody. Uh, there was a, a GIF. You guys say GIF or GIF? I'm a GIF guy. I go GIF. Yeah. Win win, man. Win win. Uh, but there was a GIF, and he was. Joe said, uh, "It's like I got to work on the GIF shirt. See if we can get that like Harry Potter moving shirt going." <laughs> yeah, the moving. Yeah. You're a Potter guy, right? I'm a Potter guy. Oh, big time. Star Wars and Harry Potter. Big time. Big time. I, I read the whole series to my daughter over. It took me almost four years. <laughs> yeah. And then we watched all the movies, so we were locked in, man. Um, you, have, you have a favorite character? <sighs> Great question. Great. Uh, mm. I think Hermione's probably my favorite character. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'm I'm way into it though. I'm like, I would t I would take a lot of people on in the uh, Harry Potter trivia world. Really? Nice. Yeah. It's, what about Marvel? You in on Marvel? I, you know, I I got into Marvel and I watched the it was our 22 movies in the first set that just concluded. Um, so I watched them uh, and tried to understand the storyline. Great job of how they were weaving everything in. I am more excited for Disney to now have bought Star Wars and have they've started to do that same type of thing with Star Wars. So I'm into the all the new shows that have been coming out and they're going to piece that together, I think. Um, you're out there shagging. Um, we're just besmirching the reputation of the pitchers behind their back. Um, who's the best shagger? Pitcher Shagger? Pitcher Shagger. Uh, Husey. Husey played outfield in college, right. no, so it's like okay. cheating. Yeah, okay. Um, but shout out to my uh, podcast host, compound host, Dakota Meckes. Yeah, absolutely. Dakota's one of my favorite outfield Shaggers really? that I've ever played with. Dakota, uh, he he's, there's smart Shaggers, there's not smart Shaggers, so there's some that uh, over Shag. So if an outfielder's trying to get work in, stay out of the way. Yeah. Uh, Dakota is very smart shagger, but he will get after it, and he gets frustrated when he doesn't catch balls. And he's a very big body. He's a big body. He's a big body. Oh boy! So it's funny to watch him uh, go find around the outfield. But he, Dakota, is my favorite outfield shagger, pitcher shagger I've ever played with. Yeah. Brandon Hughes told me in 2018 he wanted to remind me that he was 15 homers from going 2020. <laughs> 15 homers from going 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Knocking so pretty on close. The door. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Happer, who was the, um, at the All-Star game, who was the guy or a couple of guys that you were awed by? Like, man, I can't believe I'm sharing a clubhouse with this guy or looking across the diamond at this guy. Anybody? Yeah. Everybody. Uh, Everybody? No. Uh, Pulos, Pulos was one guy, you know, sharing a clubhouse with him, all of his accomplishments, everything he's done in his career. You know, I grew up, as, I grew up, like, playing the video game that he was on a cover of and, like, <laughs> Doing hit like emulating his batting stance as like a 12 year old. So to share a clubhouse with him, be a part of um, what could be his last All Star game. He's playing really well. <laughs> playing really well. I don't know if he's done or not. But uh, um, yeah, that was that was awesome to get to see those moments. I was, uh, was super impressed with Juan Soto. Um, it's kind of first time being around him. Um, it doesn't feel like he's 23. Um, he was he was an awesome guy. A bunch of other dudes that I played against, but didn't really know personally that that were, were super cool, um, just to be around. Do you guys have like a secret handshake now when you see fellow all stars? <laughs> have a little wink and a nod. And 
twinkle uh, in your eye. Yeah, <laughs> just a twinkle, just a twinkle. You gotta look close. <laughs> hey, uh, tell me a little bit about this year. Um, one of the things that's been cool is you've been good from both sides of the plate, right-handed. I know one of the things that you were talking about is the change in the bat size and then a little mechanical adjustment. Yeah. Um, yeah, righty, kind of second half of last year, I went to a half inch shorter bat. Um, and then just got back to some of the things that I did uh, as a younger player, kind of my first year. I had a lot, I, you know, I hit pretty well righty my first year. Um, and was kind of going back to some of those things that, that I had success with. And that, that kind of bred a little bit of confidence in the second half, um, different attitude, mindset, um, kind of putting all those things together. and. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been pretty good this year. There's still it's interesting. Baseball is so hard. Hitting is so hard, and uh, the you know there's always more. You know there's always things that you can get better at, and there's things this year that I've identified that I still need to work on and get better at, and and that's kind of the exciting part is that you know some of the numbers have been really good, and, and there's been some success there, but there's definitely more uh, more in the tank. If you were to give someone a basically as simplified an explanation as to how you've been able to cut your strikeout rate down and still put up really good numbers, what would it be? Um, a combination. I'm going to do. The, I'm going to answer that in a minute, but I'm going to lock in on this for a second. This is my outfield routine, guys. Uh, I'm going to do some throws the second. This is, this is what I like to do at the beginning of the series. Why, why beginning of a series? Uh, new ballpark, I mean, obviously here it's not new, um, but new ballpark, I like to get out there and see the grass and, and uh, get a feel for it. Get a feel for how it's bouncing into second base too. And you got the spin working. Yeah, going to the left, working on that spin. What will you do out there in terms of wind? Like really deciding the wind is doing this. Uh, played enough games here that you just know. Yeah, I kind of have a feel for how the wind's going to go. You look at it in BP, especially early, and try to get a gauge for it. You're going you know, to throw up some blades of, of grass, you know, lick your finger, kind of the old school technique. Yeah, there. here it's really about the flags that are in the center. Um, those are the ones that make a difference. So one's in center over the big board. Yeah. Okay. Those ones don't lie. <laughs> Willie Harris is a good fungo, guys. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know that. No, no, Ian, with those ball, the bands of dark and light grass, do you find that the ball snakes on you or moves uh, a little bit? It's a, there's a little bit of snake here. It's not too bad. It's, it's a really short surface now, um, which is great, and it's fast. So what's, like, the worst snaking some of the Some of the West Coast parks. Um, Colorado is bad. Uh, L.A. sometimes can get bad. That grass is usually a little bit more snaky than the... Northern grass, kind of our division. Plays more true. I'm a little bit out of breath, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my outfit routine. I like to do, I do three or four, to my left, work on that spin move, working on getting into the second, really feeling one good hop into the, uh, into the second baseman or whoever's playing second, their chest. And then the same thing, work on the backhands, getting rid of it, good long hop into second, and then I'll do one or two. A little bit deeper, feel that little bit longer throw, but the same thing, just trying to get that nice long hop to that guy. Just kind of my, my routine, keep my arm fresh, give myself that feel. You know, in the outfield in the big leagues, you just don't get that many chances to throw guys out at home. Um, third base coaches are making good choices. Runners have good instincts, so a lot more of those plays and, and things that make a difference on the day-to-day -day is getting the ball in to second base and cutting down uh, not necessarily throwing guys out, but making them think about going to second so that we can keep that double play in order. So that's part of my game I take a lot of pride in. All right, I got a couple more uh, before we 
we let you scram. Um, Say is out right doing a, a little bit of work right now, just taking balls live off of batting practice. Give me something you've learned about Seiya Suzuki as the year has gone on or just a funny interaction that you've had with him because we don't speak his language and yet he really gives off an openness and a warmth, but a real like, hey, how are you to almost everybody he comes across. Yeah, I mean, just I think he genuinely enjoys the game, genuinely enjoys baseball. Enjoys being out here. Um, you know, we all wish that uh, we could communicate with him a little bit more and uh, be able to be able to hear all the funny stuff that he says because we have to wait for Toy to say it. But uh, he's awesome. Look at that. Look at look at his guns. Look at look at that route. Yeah. Look how strong he looks right now, huh? No doubt. Wow. Awesome guy. I love him. And he he's just so happy for his teammates when guys do well and his adjustment to to being here and. You know, all of that, it's its impressive because it's got to be so hard to be a new country and not speak the language and still produce the way he's produced, so. Can you give us uh, an inside joke between you and the left field bleachers that we might see here tonight? Something mm. between you and the guys in left field where they'll do something or they will chant something or they'll say something to you, but something for us to look for tonight or that you would do with them every once in a while and maybe tell us one. I mean, my favorite thing with them is just the outs, you know, and they're always there. They're always giving the outs and doing that stuff. But uh, Jeff, Bleacher Jeff, my guy. Yeah. He has. Uh, I he, met him the other day on the way out. Yeah, he's awesome. He has some really good Parse chants, which is the, the compound sponsor, and he's a compound listener. So he'll, he'll, give, us, uh, he'll give us some really good. Uh, Parse chance once in a while, and and that is super. It always cracks me up. Hi, Pat, I just how are you? To come in here, you're talking about. Yeah, well, I'm talking about the left field bleachers. Oh, sick. Yeah. Hey, would you go to the concert yesterday? There was a concert. The 400 Club. I they was did? there. Yeah. You were there? I was the headliner. You were the headliner. <laughs> the ble Jeff and the bleacher uh, yeah, bum band there. played right at the 400 Club at the, one of the rooftops. Band, that's right. Yeah, I yeah. went to the. Uh, Makes sense why he was there. Yeah, I went out to the Burbs to the in-laws, but I, I didn't get there. But it was, uh, I think it was a great concert. I'm, I'm going, eventually I'm going to get to one, because he had one a couple weeks ago, too, that uh, I had dinner and couldn't you get to. And now I feel bad. I don't know what kind of music it is, really. Do you? Anybody? Like Anybody, you guys? I don't know. Not familiar. I heard it start as I, as I was on my way yeah. out. So, Ian, a uh, so question about this left field, yeah. the fact and that Jeff you've had a... The fact that you had a chance to kind of settle in in left field. Oh, there he is. Hi, Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> High five. Uh, yeah, yeah the, ch the chance that you've had to settle in in left field, how much does that help to just kind of worry about one position more than? Yeah, I mean, it's been huge. I think that's, you know, when you play a bunch of positions, you get, you have to balance the practice. You have to balance being all over the place and, and working on all of them and trying to, trying to help the team in every spot and it's more about you know being out there and, and doing the little things right uh, as opposed to really learning a position having the understanding of when you can you know when you have to play back play in take chances get your routes a little bit better and you start to get an understanding for how balls are coming off the bat how to play different different balls different hitters um, you know and it's a learning process and just being out here for kind of a year and a half straight has really given me a good understanding of, of the position, feeling like I can um, you know, make an impact, which I really appreciate. Oh, you want, a hot, you want a hot one, Boog? Yeah, let's go. This is, this is right up your alley. Go. Fan graphs, defensive war. Yep. Okay, we're just getting into the weeds. Yeah, let's get into it. There, I believe right now there is one positive defensive war left fielder in baseball. Oh, wow. Wait a How second. is that possible? <laughs> How can only one person in left field. be above what would be considered the average? Yeah. Out of 35. <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of everyone who's played the position this year, we got one that's better than the replacement. That's not, it doesn't compute to me. It doesn't make who sense. Who is that one? That I one is Stephen Kwan. Stephen Kwan, but I think Jeff McNeil, too. And Jeff McNeil's only played like McNeil. 200 innings. And Profar has gotten a, barely gotten there. Point three. Just above. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's weird. I don't. I, I have nothing. I mean, look. I. Yeah. I still think we're we're uh, there's some struggles with. How's that possible? 
individual yeah. defensive. Defensive metrics, it would yeah, seem, some of the It would yeah. seem that their system, their algo, does not value left field defense. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, look, at this point, I think... I'm on a crusade. Cameras, I'm on a crusade against I, defensive I get metrics. It. I get it. I, I, I just, I don't think that the models are good enough with what they're doing. Like, yeah, I, it's... Uh, Might be losing some people here because we're getting into the weeds. Yeah, we are. But... <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. I get it. I, I, it. It seems ridiculous that there are two guys. You know what? Well, I, I'm gonna. I'm putting that on the Twitter. How's that? Get out by, there. By definition, right? Somebody has to be average. Yeah. Ergo, somebody has to be better than average. Yeah. yeah. Seems to me. Yeah. Hey, I have a question about, uh, 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 like, when you leave the ballpark, like, say, leaving the ballpark yesterday. How aware of you are, are you of next day starting pitcher and what, when you start thinking about game planning against that pitcher? Yeah, I mean, definitely aware. Um, I'll start my prep the next morning. Um, I, I, I do night games, I'll try to do my homework. Mostly at home, I look at the pitcher, look at my previous at bats, look at the matchup so that I have an understanding coming to the park about how I'm going to go through my routine and my prep. Um, and then uh, day games. Kind of right when I get to the park, so to go through my prep. Um, and are you, are you watching a lot of video of, of, hit, of him? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm watching uh, usually last two starts, um, especially a guy like Montgomery today who, who's on a new team. You know, gonna see if he's doing anything different. Uh, watch my previous more four events. seamers, more four more seamers. Fours, yeah, that's Seems what like he's more been doing. Fours, more fours up. Uh, so just try, trying to get a feel for um, for that for what we. Uh, I think he's going to catch that. No, he's not. Uh, yeah, just a feel for if he's doing anything different. And then look at previous at-bats, kind of things that you've done well, things that you've struggled with. Start to formulate a game plan for how you're going to go through the day. You're the best. Hey, thanks, guys. I hope we didn't Thank get you. too far into the weeds there. but No, that's uh, good. Just, I like that. Did you, you guys have fun doing this? Is this fun for you Absolutely. guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. We didn't want to take no, too that's much of your time. I know you're working yeah. on stuff, but I talked to you all day. Man. Yeah, we could do this. I could do this yeah. all day. Hey. <laughs> well, we'll do it again sometime, huh? Yeah. A hundred percent. Thank you yeah. for uh, putting the mic on in the earpiece, dude. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of wires. Again. I don't know yeah. if you guys know how many wires were on me yeah, right now. Oh, I'm familiar.